Hello everyone, this is Brad Wistens, and I'm very happy to officially announce the start of my video tutorial series on advanced orbital mechanics. This series is going to assume quite a bit of prerequisite knowledge when it comes to orbital mechanics. You already should have successfully completed some missions to other planets and their moons, and you should thoroughly understand the Oberth effect, Hohmann transfers, and the effect that prograde, normal, and radial burns have on your orbit. As in most things, orbital maneuver techniques build on themselves, so if you don't have this prerequisite knowledge, it's going to be just about impossible to follow this series unless you're way smarter than I am. If you are interested in building this foundation, or if you're following the series and find that you're just missing something, I will include resources in the description on basic and intermediate orbital maneuvers. Next, let me talk about the format of this series. The motivating point here is to learn how to do complex gravity assists involving flybys of multiple planets and moons to do a single transfer as efficiently as possible. There are a lot of techniques that are not standard foundational knowledge in how to do basic transfers in this game that we're going to need to know to do these complex gravity assists. So each video in this series is going to focus on a different topic that we're going to need, and it's all going to build towards this final goal. I'm considering this video the introduction, so the next video will be part one. That's going to focus on low TWR orbital maneuvers, because those will increase our efficiency in any maneuver that we do, so we're going to want to be using that throughout the series. To give a sneak peek of the future, in the introduction here, I'm going to demonstrate how to save Delta V getting to Minmus by doing a gravity assist off of the moon. In the complete episodes on gravity assists, I'll go into depth on each step, using the techniques we've learned along the way to understand why it works. In this introduction, I'm going to move quite a bit quicker, but I do still encourage you to try to follow along and see if you can do these maneuvers with me. I'm going to be using the mod precise node to edit my maneuver nodes. You don't absolutely need this, but it will make it easier to follow along, and I'll leave a download link for it in the description. For the sake of learning how to time rendezvous, we're going to go for a gravity assist off of the moon that'll give us a direct transfer to Minmus with no orbits of Kerbin in between. First step is to set a normal prograde maneuver, just like we're going normally to the moon. We're going to need a bit less than 860 meters per second, so I'm going to start with an 860 meters per second prograde node, and then move it around until I have a rendezvous with the moon. When we rendezvous with the moon, our velocity relative to the moon is going to be in the opposite direction of our velocity relative to Kerbin. This means that any rendezvous with the moon will increase the apoapsis of our orbit. In the gravity assist episodes, I'll dive fully into the weeds of theory on why this works. Right now our goal is to just get the first gravity assist under our belt. The next step is to precisely determine the minimum magnitude of maneuver needed to give us a rendezvous of the moon that will then give us an unpowered gravity assist to Minmus. We're going to do this by editing the time of the maneuver and the prograde velocity of the maneuver until we've minimized the prograde velocity while still giving us a rendezvous of the moon, which will throw us onto an orbit of Kerbin with an apoapsis equal to the altitude of the orbit of Minmus. We're going to do this by editing the time of the maneuver in the direction needed to increase our projected apoapsis after the rendezvous of the moon. After we get it high, decrease the velocity of your maneuver until the apoapsis is back down where you can see it, and repeat this process until you have the prograde velocity as low as possible while still putting your apoapsis right on the orbit of Minmus. Don't worry about getting this exact yet, because right now we're just estimating the magnitude of this maneuver. If we performed this maneuver as is, there's no guarantee that Minmus is going to be anywhere near us when we reach its orbit. So the next step is to use this magnitude to help us guarantee that Minmus will actually be there when we reach its orbit. By determining the minimum prograde maneuver needed to reach the moon and do the gravity assist necessary, we've already determined the geometry of what the entire transfer from low Kerbin orbit to lunar rendezvous to Minmus is going to look like. We need to take this whole system and rotate it until we have the apoapsis on top of the ascending or descending node with Minmus. Now we could figure out the orbital elements of our projected orbit and use that to figure out the exact angle between our projected apoapsis and the ascending node, but since maneuver nodes are easy to change, I'm going to take the easy approach and just eyeball it for now. It appears to be about 60 degrees to me, and our orbital period is 1800 seconds, 
So I'm going to move forward our maneuver node 300 seconds, which will move it forward about 60 degrees. Unfortunately, after doing this, the moon is no longer where we need it to be. We can fix this by maintaining the position of our maneuver node relative to Kerbin, but moving it orbits into the future. So keep moving this maneuver forward, one orbit at a time, until the moon has rotated enough around Kerbin that it's in the right spot for us. Because of the relative size of the moon, there's going to be multiple orbits where we actually have a rendezvous of the moon. Try to pick the one that gives us a rendezvous that puts us onto the highest apoapsis. At this point, we might have to change the magnitude of the prograde vector a bit, because due to the difference between each orbit, it might not be exactly where it was before. At this point, we can see that my estimation of 60 degrees to move the apoapsis was pretty bad. We still need to move it about 8 more degrees, which comes out to 68 degrees that I should have moved it. Luckily, maneuver nodes are easy to change, so we can move it 8 degrees forward by moving it 40 seconds forward. So at this point, we're going to repeat the process of moving the maneuver node forward, this time by 40 seconds, and then moving it forward orbits until the moon has rotated into the correct position, and then making fine adjustments to the prograde magnitude until we have an intersection with the orbit of Minmus. This time, my estimation was fairly sound, and now the ascending node of our projected orbit and the orbit of Minmus is aligned with the intersection of these orbits. We've solved one of our problems. The remaining problem is that when we get to the intersection, Minmus isn't going to be there. We need to delay this rendezvous until Minmus is going to be there at the same time as us. Right now we can see that Minmus is actually going to reach that rendezvous slightly ahead of us. And unfortunately we planned everything as soon as possible, which means that we can't back this up in time and get there earlier because we wouldn't have needed to do a maneuver in the past. If we want to get to Minmus as soon as possible, we actually want to rendezvous with it on the descending node. Fortunately, moving our intersection from the ascending node to the descending node is very easy. We just need to rotate this whole thing around 180 degrees. Our orbital period is a little over 1,850 seconds. So to move our apoapsis forward by 180 degrees, I'm going to move forward my maneuver node 930 seconds. After doing this, we're going to have to repeat the steps of moving forward with the maneuver node in orbits until the moon has rotated into the right position. And then we're going to have to do some fine tuning to line up our intersection again. This fine tuning consists of making small changes to the timing of the maneuver and the prograde vector of the maneuver. And this is definitely the trickiest part. There's no replacement for playing around with it until you get it to work. Finally, we need to solve the problem of Minmus not being at the intersection when we get there. Fortunately, the orbital period of the moon is a lot smaller than that of Minmus, so we can wait entire orbits of the moon, and this will allow us to inch forward the position of Minmus when we get to the intersection. To stall out orbits of the moon, we're going to use the same approach we've been using. I'm going to move forward our maneuver node in orbits of Kerbin until the moon will have completed another full rotation. And I ended up doing this three times before Minmus was as close as possible to our intersection. Now in general, this isn't going to line up exactly, because the moon still has a significant orbital period that prevents us from having too much choice. However, close is good enough here, because we will be able to fix this with an extremely small correction burn. In general, this won't be exact, because the moon still has a significant orbital period which prevents us from having unlimited choice. However, you'll always be able to get it close enough that with a little bit of correction, we'll still be able to get a direct intersection with Minmus. In the example we see here, Minmus is going to be ahead of us when we reach the intersection. So what we need to do is to move the argument of our projected apoapsis forward in the positive direction. As you might have expected, we're going to repeat our method again of moving our maneuver node forward a little bit in time, and then waiting orbits of Kerbin for the moon to be in the right place. And we're going to keep repeating this until Minmus is exactly at our intersection when we get there. Because we're moving it in the positive direction, I'm moving my maneuver node forward in time, and then moving forward orbits in time. If you have the reverse case, where Minmus was going to be behind you when you reach the intersection, you need to move your maneuver node further back in time, and then go back orbits of Kerbin for the moon to be in the right place. After we plotted a rendezvous that actually goes through Minmus' SOI, we can optionally make some fine corrections to try to give us a low approach of Minmus. 
We're going to be doing a very small correction burn after passing by the MUN to get this exact, so this is optional, but it will increase your efficiency. It's going to be extremely important that our ejection burn from Kerbin is done as precise as possible. This should be easy with this test craft because it has an extremely high TWR. For how to do this with low TWR, that will be the subject of the next installment in this series. After completing the main ejection burn, I'm going to plot my correction. For ease, I'm going to put this halfway out to the moon. And because I was very precise with this ejection, this correction is going to be extremely small. In this case, only a tiny fraction of one meter per second. If you've made it this far, congratulations, because gravity assists are probably the single hardest thing to do properly in this game. And watch as the moon slingshots you for free delta V. So far, we've used 855 meters per second delta V from 75 kilometers curve in orbit. But how fast we're approaching Minmus is also important here. So let's wait until we inject into a low Minmus orbit to take stock of how well we did. In injecting into a low Minmus orbit, I used another 122 meters per second bringing the total used to 977 meters per second. It normally takes, even with optimal flying, a little over 1,080 meters per second to get from 75 kilometers curve in orbit to 4 kilometers Minmus orbit, so we saved a little over 100 meters per second with this gravity assist. I hope everyone's enjoyed the sneak peek of what's to come. Don't worry if this moved a little quickly. The rest of the videos in this series are really going to dig deep on each topic. Please leave any feedback you have in the comments. At this early point, it's going to do the most in helping me actually improve the series to come. I haven't finalized the list or order of topics yet, but when that is done, I will put it in the description. And I can't wait to see you guys in part one.